Hello, my name is Lee Taylor, and I really like to knit, so much so that some of my friends call me the Knitwit. I hope you enjoyed today's video and possibly even learned something, so let's get started. Hello and welcome to Knit Bits number 19. I have some fun stuff in store for you this week. First off, we're going to be going over knitting notions. Second off, we have project updates. And third, we're going to be talking about the difference between superwash wool and regular wool. So stay tuned, grab your knitting needles, and knit along as we go through this week's video. So let's jump straight in and get started. This week in place of a swatch lab, I'm going to be going over knitting notions. And these are the things that are not like these knitting needles behind me here, um, but are very important to the knitting process. You do not have to have all of these. However, I would recommend having them on hand because you never know when you need them. And as the boy and girl scouts say, be prepared. So I'm going to go through these. Um, some of these I have on hand at all times, wherever I'm at knitting, and other ones I just have close by. Um, so I'm going to go through these in order that I deem important, and we can go on from there. So first off, we have the rulers. Um, and these are super important to not only check the length of your project, but to check, whoops, to check your gauge. Um, I like this. It's just a yardstick that I cut down to 15 inches, so it's a lot easier to have close by. But sometimes 12 just isn't quite enough. So this is a good one. Plus, with this, I can stick up inside of a hat or inside of a sock. Um, very handy. So to do that, I made sure I rounded off the corners. Um, another one that you might find handy is a um, uh, paper or not paper, this is plastic, but a um, kind of like a tailor's tape measure. Um, this one is very handy, um, especially like in shawls. I used this one in particular when I did the swoop of the warding spell shawl, so I could run that right along the swoop and get the most accurate that I possibly could. The last one in the ruler section is this gauge ruler here. Um, very important. You can actually measure your gauge, but it also has the things so you can measure your knitting needles and crochet hooks if you are inclined to use those. Which brings me to my next point. It is very handy to have some crochet hooks on hand. Um, sometimes when you're weaving in tails or if you drop and have to pick up stitches, a crochet hook is very good to have on hand. Another good thing to have on hand are a pair of scissors. These have a little cap and they're just little snips. I don't see the need for full size scissors. Um, you can definitely use those, that's not a problem. But I just like the little snips because I'm not cutting anything that's larger than this. I'm not cutting up the side of a garment. I have not started sticking, um, so you may want full size scissors for that, but even then snips would work. Um, more on sticking in a future video. Another good thing to have is needles. And no, I'm not talking about these needles here. I'm talking about tapestry needles or blunt tip needles. Uh, these are a few that I have. These bronzy, coppery looking ones are my favorite because they have the, not only are they blunt tip, but they have the bent tip. And I like those. It's easier to get into the stitches. Um, you can go and buy these uh, usually in a set of three. Sometimes there's more, sometimes there's fewer, and you can find them usually in something similar to that. So this, I have a needle at all times in my knitting bag, regardless of where I go. I also have some form of ruler in my bag at all times ready to go, because you never know when you're going to get to the end of a project, and these are very important for that. Um, and of course, you know, snips. Another very important thing to have on hand are some stitch markers. And these are ones that I've made myself. And um, I have these in different colors. I have green, I have purple. There is a red and a blue. I'm holding both of those together. Um, I also have some clear ones. I have more of the clear that I use on hats. 
Um, when I mark for the crown decreases, I use those. Or if I'm working top down, the crown increases. And I just keep these in an old pill bottle. Um, I also keep markers on hand at all times because you never know when you're going to need to mark something. These are good to have. Um, there's a lot of different types of markers. I will put a link down to the video where I actually talked about stitch markers in a bonus bit. Another important thing to have on hand, especially if you print out your patterns, a highlighter to mark your size, because then you can go through and highlight all the numbers that apply to your size and makes it a lot easier. Another important thing to have is a pen so you can make marks on your printed pattern. You can also use a pen to keep track on just a scrap piece of paper on if you are on a right side or wrong side row. You could also use, this is not vital, this is just a uh, little splurge thing, one of these little stitch counters, or uh, they're just counters, but I use them to count so I can keep track of what row I'm on. It goes up to 9,999. 9 Hopefully I'll never need that many. And then you can just zero it out when you are done. This is something very handy to have. On socks, I like to have this. And on my sweater, I have this, especially the green sweater, so I can mark and keep track because it says knit for a certain number of rows. I can use this. Again, not vital. You can do the same thing with a pen and a piece of paper. Um, but this is harder to lose. Another good thing to have on hand is some form of an emery board, um, some or just like a nail file, whichever you want to call it. I have, of course, the standard, but for the heavy duty projects, and that is for if you're working and you're, either your nails start catching or you have a bit of rough skin, you can kind of file that down. For big jobs, jobs of rough skin, I actually use this. It is for feet um, and you just turn it and it just spins around. I love using this on my because um, the insides of my fingers right here get very dry um, from the wool and so I can use this to grind down that very quickly rather than sitting there for 10 minutes and using one of these. Um, again not a necessary thing but I absolutely love this. I cannot, when I go to cut my nails, I cannot cut them evenly. So I use this to actually grind down my nails instead of clipping them. Which brings me to my next one, nail clippers. Um, sometimes your nails start um, snagging, uh, especially those who have longer fingernails. And so it's good to have some of these to snip and cut your fingernails. And should you lose your scissors, this will cut yarn. Very untraditional, but it will work. And that is all that is important. My last thing to have close by, and it ties in perfectly with these emery boards and nail files and grinders, is some lotion. And I have two kinds. I have this um, Naked Bee lotion, which is very good, but it sometimes leaves me feeling a little greasy. Um, it is pH balanced and hypoallergenic, uh, which is very nice to have um, but I actually prefer this uh, triple aniline aloe vera and um, this is really good it does not leave me feeling greasy however if you have a wool allergy allergy particularly a lanolin allergy you cannot use this because it is triple lanolin this um, let's see here this does not have lanolin in it, at least that I can see just offhand, so this would be a good alternative. They also make um, lotion bars, and it looks like a little bar of soap, and you just rub it on your hands, and your the warmth of your hands kind of melts it a little bit, and then you can you know rub it in and it, it absorb. Um, I know a lot of knitters that actually use the lotion bar rather than regular. Um, but that is the things that I use and have on hand at all times, not just the knitting needles back here. So just something to think about. 
um, you can add to your knitting arsenal. Please let me know down in the comments if there are other things that you use as a knitting notion that I did not talk about on here. Um, one other thing that I want to mention, this basket right here is full of scrap yarn. I mean, full. That's all this is, is when I finish a project and there's not enough to do something else with it other than like a swatch, it goes in here. Um, so this is good to have to keep because you can use some of this, especially the finer stuff, like what I just finished with the warding spell shawl. It's a fingering weight. So if you need to take your um, stitches off of the needles and put them to the side, you can use some scrap yarn. They also make um, actual stitch keepers, and I will go get one of those and show you because I forgot to have those on hand. So just a moment. Okay, so I've got all of my stitch holders just on this little light bulb ring here. And there's a bunch of different sizes that you can use. Um, you've seen these in the swatch lab that I have put my swatches onto these and then work off of. Um, I did not mention double pointed needles in the notion section because I count those as regular needles, although those can be used for a cable needle, more on all things cable in the future. They can also be used as a stitch holder. Um, and if you do that, you're definitely going to want to find some of these little um, needle stoppers. So those are my notions again, um, and we'll just gloss over. I've got them all written down right over here, so I am going to just read them off real quickly. Some sort of ruler, scissors, um, needles, stitch markers, crochet hook, pen or highlighter, nail file, nail clippers, lotion, stitch holder, and or needle stopper. So those are the notions, and again, let me know down in the comments below what notions you use, especially if they are not ones that I've listed in this video. So that is the notions portion of this video. Next week, we will be back with a regular swatch lab. Next up, we have the project update section where we're going to be going over Santa Gnome number two. We're going to be going over a Christmas gift. I can't show you the gift, but I can show you the yarn leftover and the, some details about it, as well as another Christmas gift, but that one I can show you because they do not watch these videos. So let's jump over and take a look at these project updates. First up in the updates, we have Santa Gnome number two. Um, and to prove that I did knit a second one, you can see the first one right back here, which I will grab to show you some subtle differences. So this Santa Gnome, the white portion, is slightly larger in this second one. I did an extra round of that. I just felt like this was a little bit too small. This is definitely better. Um, could be gone even further. That's entirely up to you. But if you knit further, that makes where you sew on the beard and the nose a little bit more tricky. So if you were going to add more of the white, um, you could just start it in the actual knitting of the hat itself rather than waiting for the ribbing section. Um, for me, that was plenty. And then, of course, you know, the belt and the bottom. It seemed a little bit more open in this one than it, well, you know what? I said that. It's obviously not. It just seemed a little bit looser, so I used my yarn and a um, sewing needle and kind of wove that through and kind of helped close that up. Um, uh, 14 grams of great-grandmother's stuffing in the heart section and 12 marbles in the base, just as every gnome. And so two of the three sister gnomes have been completed. Um, I threw up a video last week, or last video, um, when I showed this gnome. I will go ahead and add another video 
at the end of this segment of the Three Sisters once again, as well as some pictures of this gnome. So that is Santa Gnome number two, a.k.a. Dorothy. Next up, I have a Christmas gift that I cannot show on the channel because the person who it's for does watch these videos. However, I can show leftover yarn. I have, let's see here, I use 74 grams out of the 100. So this is what I have left of that. The full skein, if you are curious, looks like this. I bought two because I wasn't sure how much I was actually going to use because this is slightly larger than the yarns I normally use for hats. But... I had plenty, so now that means I get to play around and make myself something out of this. Um, maybe, I'm thinking a cowl, an actual cowl. So that is that. I do have some details on that project. I have them on Ravelry on my tablet down here below. So I'm gonna grab that and give those details to you correctly, because my memory is not good enough to just do it offhand. Um, I started, and I'd work this one from the, um, brim up and I used uh, double pointed needles on this one and I cast on 88 stitches and knit that for um, f uh, it was three inches I have down here four but I did knit to just three inches um, because they did not want the brim they did want the brim knit up however I just went with three because four seemed way too much. So I knit for four inches or three inches and I, I would try it on periodically to make sure that that actually seems like a normal dimensions on the hat and it did work out perfectly with just the three inches. Um, I did, like I said, I cast on 88, knit a two by two rib for three inches. Then um, I was working with four needles and then a fifth to knit. So I increased one stitch. Um, no, I increased two stitches um, on two separate rounds. So I did two rounds of increases. Um, I wrote this stuff down on what I wanted to do on the hat and I have not updated on what I actually did. But once I read what I had planned, then I remember, and that's just real life knitting. That's just the way it is. That's why I said in the notion section, keep a pen and highlighter handy so you can make notes because not everyone uses Ravelry or something digital like that keep good notes. You will want them in the future if you ever go to knit the project again. Keep your notes. Um, and anyways, and then I knit, I had a multiple of 12. So instead of doing a 10-pointed um, uh, swirl, star, whatever you want to call it, decrease for the crown, I actually had 12 points. And I actually liked that a little bit better. So I may do that a little bit more often in the future. Um, and then I just, um, pulled the stitches through the end because I had, uh, 12 stitches and I just, like I said, I just pulled those through those stitches and wove it in. I did attempt to decrease an extra set, um, brought it down to four stitches, but I didn't like that. So I just left it to 12 and just pulled through and wove in my ends. I will be doing an entire series of videos on knitting a hat from start to finish. So I know I'm using a lot of terminology that you may not be familiar with, but I will be showing that on this channel. So stay tuned and look for that. Um, that should be coming up here relatively soon. Um, and that is all for the hat called Trash Ninja. And again, I used this yarn by Chicken Lady Fiber Arts in the colorway Live Long and Prosper. And this is her Wyandot MCN Aaron Weight. It is 80% merino wool, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon. Um, a very soft and squishy yarn, definitely um, worthy to be up against the skin. I would love a sweater knit out of this and I may see if I can get a sweater's worth of a color in the future once I finish these other two sweaters that I have resting um, and kind of go more of a one big project at a time. I may 
decide to do a sweater. Who knows? The wind may change tomorrow and I decide I don't ever want to knit a sweater again. Um, but this is on my radar of something that I may want to do. So that is Trash Ninja Hat. Last up in the project updates for this week is this hat here. It is Wave at the Navy. Um, I knit this for my grandfather's Christmas gift. I have 66 grams left out of um, out of a 100 gram hat. I was really surprised that it only took that amount because normally it takes almost the entire skein. Um, but normally I like to have an extra long rib and flip up. He did not want that so I have knit this with that in mind. This one I worked top down using a um, method called Magic Loop. Again, more on that in a future video. Um, but I started up top and have this. This is the 10 pointed star swirl. I don't know if that's coming up. You'll be able to see it. I'm going to um, post some pictures at the end of this. Anyways, I worked the top, uh, marked when I got done with that, worked the body, marked when I got done with that, worked the two by two ribbing and then bound off with the stretchy bind off that I taught in a few or a past video, which I will link to down below. Um, this turned out really well. Again, I did this on magic loop, which I'm a big fan of on small projects, bigger projects like hats. I'm not sure that it's my favorite method, um, but it is a worthy method. And, um, so again, I've got pictures of that um, for at the end, but it is plenty big and warm. Um, some information on this hat here that I've got here. Um, it is Cascade 220 Superwash in their wave line, which just means it's not solid. It's Some sections are marled. It's kind of a gradient of where the colors change and kind of gets a little bit more solid and then you get some more variegated and then it switches. It's a really cool yarn. I really like this. Um, I'm going to knit this up. I have enough here to knit an exact duplicate of this and I may actually do that so I can see what the rest of this would turn out into. Um, like I said, I have 66 grams left of this out of 100 grams. So that only used 44 grams in this hat. Again, that seems like a weird weird number. Um, it is 100% wool. It is a worsted weight. Again, Cascade 220 Superwash in their wave line. The color was simply blue-green. And um, I've mentioned before, but my grandfather was in the Navy. And the line is called Wave. The there's a bunch of different colors in the wave line. It's not just blue green, but it was very serendipitous that it was in these colors because it very much fits with the Navy theme. Wave, these colors, and then at the Navy. So wave at the Navy. Um, hopefully he, he likes this. It is super wash wool, which means it can be put through the washer. Some put their wool through or the super wash through the dryer and some lay it out to dry. Um, that is, you know, personal preference. Um, I have knit him and my grandmother multiple hats. However, I always knit them in acrylic and I wanted something actually warmer because he is always cold. Um, he says when he gets to, to our house that it's like walking into a meat locker because we have it down to 70 or 71 degrees and their house runs close to 80. Um, so he's always cold, so I wanted to knit him a very warm hat, and this superwash wool will definitely do that. So that is that hat, as well as the end of my project update section. Um, now I will post pictures of my projects. In the final segment, uh, not quite a bit, um, not a bonus bit, rather, um, we're going to talk about the difference between superwash wool 
and regular wool. And I have an example to show you of both, although you can't see the difference like this, but I do have pictures uh, from a microscopic level pictures that I will put up so you can see the difference, not only in different fibers, but what superwash versus regular wool actually will look like. So here we have a regular wool and here we have a superwash wool. Again, you can't tell a difference just from looking at the two. Um, superwash usually will feel a bit softer. Depends on which type of wool it actually is. But that's the general rule of thumb. Now what um, regular wool is versus superwash is the strand of regular wool has, or wool in general, has scales. And that's exactly what it looks like. It looks like just a line of scales. If you've ever seen a pine cone before it's popped open, that is what regular wool looks like, is it looks like a pine cone. And the reason that we do superwash is because when wool is agitated, sometimes just by itself, sometimes wet, sometimes warm and wet, but agitation can make those scales lock into place just like that. I mean, it just binds up. Um, for lack of a better word, it mats up. If you've ever had a pet that's been matted, that is what regular wool will do with agitation. And it is called felting. And that is the method that we use to make felt. Is we just take wool fibers and we just mat them up on purpose. However, if you're knitting a garment like a hat and it felts up in the wash or it just felts up in general, that can shrink drastically in size. And so a hat for a large adult may end up fitting a small child. Um, the, the felting can be quite dramatic. So we would invented superwash so that way we can ease, more easily wash and tend to our garments. Now what superwash is, there's two different methods. One uses a some kind of chemical glue and it glues those scales so they can't do this they just they glue them and it's a little bit smoother along the deal so it can't felt up or at least it's a lot harder to make it felt up superwash can felt under extreme circumstances um, as i mentioned in the wave at the navy section superwash can go through the washer but some don't put it through the dryer in case it does felt from the extra agitation and heat. And some do send it through the washer and have no trouble with it ever. Entirely personal preference. Um, if you are going to send your item through the washer and dryer, knit a swatch so you can kit gauge or check your gauge, then wash it and dry it and see what it does. And if it felt, then you know it can't go through the dryer. And if it's perfectly fine, then use that to measure what your gauge is. Um, because that is what blocking is, is how you intend to clean and care for your garment is what you need to use to get your gauge. So you can chemically glue those scales together so it becomes a lot more cohesive. Or you can take the fiber and scrape off scales um, because without scales they obviously can't grab each other and felt up um, so there are, like i said there are the two options of gluing or scraping off excess scales and i think i have not studied this super in depth i just know that what the different methods are i believe that the chemical um, process is the more common. I could be incredibly wrong. If you know the answer, please put it down in the comments below and I will edit, um, put a segment in the next video of a correction. So like I said, I do have pictures to show you, which I will pop up at the end of this. Um, but just be aware that when you're buying yarn, whether it be regular wool or superwash or cashmere or alpaca or acrylic or nylon or polyester or cotton or bamboo or linen or silk 
whatever the fiber is, if you are knitting it for someone else, make sure that they know the correct way to wash and care for your object because you do not want to spend a bunch of time knitting up a hat or a sweater or socks or any type of garment and it go through the washer and dryer and it felt and they can no longer wear it and all of that time that you spent on this will feel like it's wasted you can't get that time back um, but that would be very very heart-wrenching gut-wrenching to have that happen um, so make sure to educate whoever it is that is getting the object on how to wash and care for it correctly there are a lot of people that will knit baby items only in either superwash or acrylic. I prefer acrylic because you can put it through the washer and dryer and there's no problem with it because babies get sick and have accidents and you want something that can very easily be cleaned. You do not want to go out and spend $50 per hank of yarn with super amazing cashmere that they get sick on and then they can't wash it quite as easily you don't want to spend all that extra money or maybe you do maybe you have a bunch of money that you have that you can just spend on very expensive yarns but for the average person you don't want to spend a bunch of money on yarn and knit a project that it can't be cared for correctly um, some people that doesn't bother if they send it out they uh, and say you know hand wash it dry it flat and if they don't well that's on them. There are some people that say, you know, I've messed up and it's been felted. Will you knit me another item? And that is up to you to decide. Um, but what you need to take away from this is there is a difference between superwash wool and regular wool. Again, it's because of the scales. Regular wool has them. Superwash either chemically glues them together or um, just scrapes and breaks off. It does not get all of them off and the glue down method glues it down but there is still a couple of little ridges but it doesn't catch the same as regular wool. Um, so that is the difference between the two and at the end of this now I will post all of the different pictures so you can take a look at those. If you have further questions on the difference between superwash and regular wool Please either um, make a comment down below or email me. My email is on my about page on my channel. Um, but get with me and ask your question and I can um, make an amendment to this video and we can move forward from there. To wrap up this week's video, we talked about knitting notions. We went over project updates, including Santa number two, Trash Ninja, and Wave at the Navy. And in our regular chit chat seg segment, we went over the difference between superwash wool and regular wool. I did want to point out if you have a wool allergy or are allergic to lanolin, um, which I talked about in the, when I was talking about lotion, you're obviously not going to want to knit with wool, um, especially sheep's wool or goat's wool. Some other animal fibers may be available that you can use, um, but just, you know, um, have that on your radar. Of if you're having a bad reaction to a knitted garment, it, it may be a wool allergy or just an allergic reaction to lanolin itself. Um, but that is our week's video. Notions, project updates, superwash versus regular wool. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you um, put something down in the comment below about if you have a different knitting notion or if you know or have questions about the difference between regular wool and superwash wool. And until the next video, keep knitting.